Fun. All right, Haley, you want to kick us off? Yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'll share this. Okay, so we're going to be showing you the category and some of the, the staff that picked uh, each of these feature categories today. And we're going to start out with calendar settings, which for many of you is probably something you haven't touched in quite a while. It's often one of the very first things that kitchens set up when they create their food corridor account. Um, and myself and Carlos, one of our developers, have picked a couple really easy, quick uh, calendar settings that are really easy to turn on or turn off um, that allow you a little bit of extra flexibility and customization that's specific to your kitchen needs. So we'll take a look at those. We have two. So, you know, this is just a kitchen account. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my calendar settings with this gear icon. You can also get there by kitchen settings, but this is a nice little shortcut. And we have, uh, let's see. So these are all the different uh, calendar spaces for this kitchen. There's, you know, a lot of different spaces in the kitchen. It's not just, you know, one um, kitchen prep area. It's a lot of different ones. So, and not all of them, you know, might be open during the same times, probably not quite the same um, use for each space. So the first thing that's really easy to set up is making sure that your hours of operation are correct for all of your spaces. Um, you know, you might not be open 24 seven, maybe not every day, maybe different spaces have different open hours. So in this kitchen example, we have a little pop-up event space. So a kitchen client can rent the space for kind of retail purpose on Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So, you know, we don't want people booking on a Monday. That space is not available then. So I really easily go down here and set up my hours of operation. The default is just 24-7. So if, if that's the case, then you don't really have to worry about this. But I know that this is actually only available from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So I can set that up on Saturday and Sunday. And then for the rest of the week when it's closed, I can really easily just set it up to say closed all day. It's not gonna be available. Once I'm done with that, I can save it. And then when I go back to the schedule and I can see the closed times, and well, let's see if it's going to show. I should be able to see all of the the times that the kitchen is closed. Yeah, like, maybe just refresh. Yeah, maybe I do need to just refresh the page. Let's see. There we go. So, you know, if I'm a food business and I want to go in and book the pop-up space, um, it's only going to be available during these open times and not during the closed time. So this will prevent anybody from going in and, you know, booking something when it's not available. And it's really easy to customize it based on all the different spaces in your kitchen. So that's the first thing is just setting up hours of operation. Pretty easy. And the second calendar setting is the ability to charge for certain spaces separately from your billing plans. So if your kitchen is like a lot of other kitchens uh, using the food corridor, you might have your clients pay monthly for their kitchen time. So for prep space, production space, maybe they get a certain number of hours or credit in the kitchen every month um, that they use for, for kitchen space. But there might be some spaces that you have available that are kind of above and beyond that special event space, conference rooms. Um, yeah, like a, for events and um, special uses that you might wanna treat differently from the other parts of the kitchen. Maybe it costs more. And we can see this event space has a very different hourly rate than some of the other spaces in the kitchen. So it's really easy to set up a calendar that's charged separately from the rest of the kitchen. I can go back into this pop-up event space calendar. I'll scroll down here. And I have this option that says, apply clients bookings in this space to their billing plans. I have the option of yes or no. 
Um, because I know this space is separate and I want to treat this as kind of a separate service, I'm going to say, no, I want this space to be charged separately from the billing plan. So instead of this booking being applied to that monthly plan that they pay for, this is actually going to be charged that $45 an hour hourly rate the same day that they book the time. So this is a really great um, way to just take advantage of all the different spaces that you have in your kitchen and you know, make sure that that additional revenue stream is accurate and makes sense for the spaces that you have available. So that's the other little calendar tip. Okay. So I'm going to move on to the second one, unless there's any questions in the chat specifically about um, some of the calendar settings. Don't have any questions yet. Great. All right. All right. We're going to move on to uh, our second set of features that are some staff favorites, uh, including our founder and CEO, Ashley Colpart. This is one of her favorites. Um, it is also one of our developers, Leandro's favorite. And it's a really exciting new feature that we've developed and um, released in the past year uh, in 2023. And it's really to streamline your client communications and inter interactions from the very beginning. And it's called onboarding flows. So uh, this also lives in your kitchen settings right next to calendars. And you can use this tool to streamline your processes with a lot of different types of clients in a lot of different types of situations. So you can imagine, you know, any process where you're guiding them, someone through some steps um, to get from point A to point B, you could use an onboarding checklist to do that. So you can imagine, you know, all those new prospective clients who email you or fill out your application and they're really excited, but they do have some work to get to the point of being kitchen ready. This is a great way to accommodate them. Uh, maybe you have somebody who's a seasonal kitchen user. Maybe they're a farmer's market vendor or something like that. And they're probably only using the kitchen for a few months at, out of the year. And when they come back, maybe there's some things that you want to refresh them on. You also might have a situation where you update a lot of your policies or um, kind of processes, and you want all of your clients to go through that refresh and make sure that they're all on the same page about what those uh, rules are. So there's a couple different options here. Uh, for, the, for this example, let's go ahead and just go through what it would look like to create a checklist for a new prospect to follow to get kitchen ready. So I can create that checklist from this template. So this lets us start from, not from scratch. Um, these are just some examples. And you're able to customize kind of what the action item is, link somewhere where they are able to fill it out and provide some instructions on how to do that step. So there's already a few in here, but we can also, you know, add from some of the drop down lists that are nice that, you know, we, we commonly see that are useful. I can also add a custom item. So this kitchen has a welcome video that they have, you know, produced for their own kitchen. So I can go ahead and link that specific welcome video and provide some instructions. Watch welcome video on YouTube. Oops. Before kitchen floor. Save that. And I can kind of rearrange things in the order that, you know, makes the most sense. Oops. I don't know what that. Just a caveat. This is our test environment, so sometimes we're uh, testing. We're well, we're always testing lots of new features. So sometimes things in the test environment, uh, you get to see a little behind the scenes, what it looks like to test. Yeah. So I'll just go ahead and we'll just do this for now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I've created this checklist. Looks good. What does it look like for, you know, one of my prospects? If I assign this to somebody, what does it look like? Well, I can see here, this is the perspective from um, 
a food business. So they'll be able to see what step they're on. They can submit something, you know, that they've completed. Um, they can, you know, link out to other things. So we can see, you know, this was linked to this um, article that lets them kind of see how to book space in the kitchen, all that good stuff. So great. We built the checklist. We feel good about it. Now the next step and really the aha moment is you get to assign this to a client and they get to start working through it on their own. So it's really going to empower them to have ownership over their onboarding process um, and whatever steps they need to take in the kitchen. So since this is for a prospect, I'm going to go to my prospects tab here and I see I have a brand new client. I actually, you know, we got an email from Honey Buns Bakery the other day. They seem like a really good fit. We want them to get started in the kitchen. I can go ahead and select my checklist from the list of checklists I've created and I can save it. And wow, looks like they already have some progress. I wonder what, what does that look like? So a lot of these tasks um, that are directly related to their food corridor account, they're gonna automatically populate if that task has been completed. So. Um, in this case, Honey Buns Bakery, they already have a payment method on file. So that task, check, that's done. Uh, this is also going to be the case with things like uploading all of their required documents that you've set. Um, maybe you want them to make their first booking on the calendar. A lot of these things are connected directly to the food corridor and they can complete automatically. So that's a really great way to track process, track the progress and know that things are being completed. And from the food business perspective, this is Honeybun's uh, account. Now, when I log into my Food Corridor account, I right away see all the different steps that Flavors Kitchen has outlined for me to complete. Um, I can go ahead and follow these instructions. I can mark things as complete, um, and that basically shares to the kitchen. You know, okay, they've completed this. Review it. Mark it. At, mark it as done. So nobody's blocking anyone, um, and there's notifications so you know you know where people are at in their progress. So this is a really great tool again for a lot of different situations, not just for new prospects, but also for maybe for new or returning clients. And um yeah, it's a really powerful tool to streamline things just from the beginning. And there's probably a lot of opportunity still to have those personal interactions with people and kind of add your uh your kitchen's personal touch. But maybe it doesn't need to be every single person needs to walk through every single of these steps with you individually. This is a great way to scale it up. Um, so again, this lives in your kitchen settings. Um, you'll have you'll be able to create some checklists and test it out. It is an add-on. So if you want to start applying it to, to clients and prospects, uh, it is an add-on that starts at $19 a month. So feel free to check it out. Give it a try. Um, and yeah, see what you can do. So I think that's it for the first couple before I pass it on to Megan. Any questions about onboarding flows in the chat? Nothing. All right. Must be super clear. Okay. Or everyone's already using it, maybe. Yeah, we're all using it. <laughs> everyone's an expert. Okay. All right. Okay, so I'm going to take us back to, so this is the third three of five um, favorite staff pick. And so I'm going to take us back to kitchen settings in um, plans. So in billing plans, so up here, kitchen settings, billing plans, and I'm going to scroll down to here, credit-based plans. Um, this feature is a way to add a percentage discount or increase uh, to a billing plan. And so this is Gerardo's favorite. He's one of our developers and he loves it because it's a way for you to add a really easy customization, but also allow that customization to be automated. So you don't have to go in and do workarounds or credit money back to people if they reach a certain amount. So basically it's a way for you to charge um, different rates in your spaces while giving an incentive uh, for a user. 
And so you saw when Haley shared her screen with uh, all the different space rates. So if that's you, if you're a kitchen with a lot of different space rates and you wanna charge someone those different rates, credit-based monthly plans are a good solution for you. But if you wanna incentivize, so say you have, for example, um, a user that's gonna pay for really, you know, one of your higher packages. You can say you need to pay this amount up front, um, but I'm gonna give you a discount. So as you book, it's gonna deduct at less of a rate. Um, and so again, a way to incentivize maybe that higher package um, or vice versa. If you have someone, maybe again, who's someone who's a, a heavy user and they're using a lot of your utilities and maybe you wanna charge a variable rate for some of that utility usage, you can charge a little bit extra with a percentage. So it's a nice way for you to either give a discount um, or, or charge extra. So let's go in and check it out. So when you're here in your credit-based plans, I'm gonna go edit. So the default for credit-based plans is to charge calendar rates. So if a business pays this amount up front as they book, they're their um, kind of credit retainer is deducted based off the calendar rates wherever they book. Uh, if you wanna charge that percentage, you can just click right here and change this. So for the example of someone, if you wanna work in a, a percentage for utility costs, you can say maybe charge 102% of calendar rates. Or if, again, if you have someone who um, you're trying to incentivize a higher package or you know, it's an, you're a nonprofit and there's some grant funding going on or a cohort or a scholarship client, what have you, you can say charge 90% of the calendar rates. So this essentially gives them a 10% discount. So that means if they're going to book in a $50 an hour space, they'll only be deducted at $45 an hour. Or if they book in a $30 an hour space, they're going to be deducted at $27 an hour. So again, it takes the different rates of the different spaces and applies this discount across the board. Um, so we'll save that. And again, that's really nice if you're charging different rates for different spaces. So it's just a way to get that food business to the right, the right rate for you. Um, and just a, a new way to think about an incentive. Uh, the other place that this is, is if you have someone on an hourly billing plan. So hourly means that they're charged for their booking the day of their booking, you know, after it's uh, finished. If you want to give someone who's on hourly a customer, you can do the same thing. So manage plan, go down to their billing plan and choose to apply a custom rate. And here you can decide a fixed dollar amount. So $20, no matter where they book, or again, if you have different space rates, 90% of that calendar rate and the same thing will apply. Uh, and your food businesses don't see this. So they don't see any of your calendar rates. They don't see their pricing or other people's pricing. It doesn't tell them you're on 102%, for, for example. Um, it basically just calculates their cost and that's what they see. So they see their own cost, but they don't know necessarily that they're at 102 or 90. Ooh, so. again, we have a question in the chat from Jolene. Um, she said that they're doing a three month promotional period of 50% off. Um, do they have to edit each customer's profile or can they just do that across multiple businesses? Oh, lovely. That is why, and this is, this is a new ish feature from, I think we released it in January. Um, you don't have to necessarily go into each client and apply that. Um, we worked it into the plan itself. So if a client is assigned this standard based credit plan already, and you want to add a 50% discount here, you can just change it to 50 and that will apply to anyone who is assigned on this plan. So if you're doing it for three months, say you're doing it from October, November, December, um, you, can you can basically change this anytime in October um, because these clients on the credit-based plan are only charged once a month. So as long as you set it sometime in October, all of their overage and all of that will be deducted or charged per um, that 50% rate. And then if you did October, November, December, after January billing, then I would again change it back to 100% or whatever it is. So. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Good question. 
She said, thank you. <laughs> yeah, the only time you need to, to change it on a per client basis is if those clients aren't hourly, then at that point you would do it in their client profile. Um, but if it's a monthly plan like this, just change it in the plan. Well, any other questions on percentages? Okay. So the fourth uh, favorite, again, we kind of took like a bunch of little favorites and stuck them into one category, which is documents. So we've done a lot of cool changes with documents lately. And so this was Haley Collins pick as well as Jack's pick uh, were some of these little changes. And so I'll take you to first. So one thing that Jack mentioned loving was on this client summary. This is a really nice way if, for example, you, the health department comes for a visit, um, you can just show them the screen and, and let them know who's compliant, who's not. Um, it's just a really nice at a glance view. So basically like green is good, orange is like pretty good. Um, orange means right here that it's expiring soon. This document's expiring within the next 45 days. Green means it's not expiring anytime soon. Red means something's missing. So either it's not uploaded or it's expired. Um, and you can use this handy little filter right here and say like, I wanna see everyone who has anything red. So not uploaded or expired. And then you can follow up. Um, the nice thing is, is that the food quarter automatically sends reminders or notifications 45 days in advance, two weeks and three days in advance of any document expiring. And so we'll send you a notification and your food business. And that way, neither of you need to track it. Like we will automatically let you know. Um, but if a document's already expired or it never was uploaded, then you're not getting those automatic notifications. So what you can do is just hover over and say, send reminder. And in one click, or I guess two clicks, just like really easy, send a little reminder like, hey, you need to add this. Hey, you need to add this. Um, you can also edit this to whatever you want, like welcome, whatever, and send a message. So you can you can edit it, but it's gonna just this pre-filled little reminders for those red guys. And so that's handy. Um, and then if we venture over here to document settings. This might, similar to calendars, you maybe set this up at the beginning when you first came onto the food quarter and haven't looked at it since. So there are some, oops, let me turn this off. Some cool uh, new little features in here. And so one of these is this enforce required documents. And so this is a nice way to basically enforce your food businesses to add their documents in order to book in your kitchen. So similarly to they have to have a payment method in order to book, and that's like kind of a good kick for them to get their payment method added, you can do the same thing with documents. So you can say you have to add your documents um, and they can't be expired in order to book. So if we say, turn this on, and then we go to a food business account, and we'll go here to the calendar and we'll try to create a booking. And they'll say, nope, you can't. You have to add your documents. And so, again, a really nice way to let the system be the bad guy and let the system enforce that so you don't have to, like, decline bookings, remind them again. Like, just set this, and it's so easy. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of a cool one. We have another question here, Megan. Um, is there any way we can have a watermark saying sample on our blank agreement? as I have seen clients have printed blank and filled and submitted to farmer's markets and health departments. Um, so if I'm understanding correctly, you want to have a watermark on your document. Uh, if that's the case, you can use this kitchen docs tab to add any of your documents. And so you can have these be private just to you or shared with all of your clients. So if you have something like a a blank document with a watermark, you can add that. However, basically on their end, they're going to see right here under kitchen documents, the ones that you've shared. 
And so they're just gonna click this to download it. So it's gonna still have that watermark, um, you know, and they can sign it and, re and upload it into their documents, but it wouldn't necessarily get rid of the watermark if I'm understanding that correctly. Does that help to, to answer your question? Yes, he said thank you. Yeah, so, yeah. So I guess there's no like automated way to get rid of the watermark, um, but you can add anything that you want. Just yeah, right here, and you can show hide. Cool. Good questions. Okay, and so the last thing, the last feature we wanted to show um, is the flip integration, and so this is my pick. Uh, I love this one because A, we, we just released it and so we've just worked on it. Um, and B, it's, I love it because it takes almost no setup from you and it delights your food businesses. So it just gives them a really awesome experience, um, you know, with nothing that you need to set up. It's just ease. Uh, and so what it is, is a FLIP integration. So if you don't know FLIP, it stands for Food Liability Insurance Program and they offer insurance to food businesses. So for us, it was a really awesome mission aligned partner to partner with, to be able to, um, again, bring that ease to your clients. And so basically on your end, all you need to do is toggle this on. It's free for you. Um, it's just an option for you. So you can offer this integration to them or not. Um, you just agree. And then it'll ask you, which document do you want to be associated with FLIP? So which doc, which required document do you want your food businesses to be able to apply for FLIP insurance and have it all right in the food corridor? And so there's this drop down here and say like, like oh, I actually want it associated with XYZ. You can just cancel this and add a new document right here um, and then do it again. For this example, we'll go ahead and just choose insurance, confirm, and then you'll see the little flip flip guy right there. And so you know this required document, um, your food business will be able to apply for flip with this required document. And so if we go back to a food business account, refresh, they'll see this apply with flip right here. And the reason why I love it for food businesses is because it eliminates so much of the back and forth. They don't have to get an email from you with the site and the instructions and all of that. Um, they don't have, they can just simply click apply with flip or, you know, options. And it's still an option for them. So even if you offer this integration, they don't have to go with flip. It's just an option to make it easy for them. Um, so they can click insurance options and then either, yes, I want to apply with flip or I'm going to upload my own insurance that I got through a, a different carrier. Um, and so if they click apply with FLIP, basically what happens is they will, will create an application for them with the information we already have. And so they don't have to enter some of the duplicate information. We'll enter things like their email, their website, their name. We'll add your kitchen as an additional insured automatically. It's no cost, um, but it covers you. And so that's, you know, insurance for you. Uh, and so that's all added. They can also, as you probably saw, enter this coupon code, FC10, and get $10 off. Um, or some kitchens have their own coupon code. They can also enter yours instead, either way. Um, but they can get $10 off that way. And, uh, and then basically they'll click submit, choose their options, click submit on the application. And then once Flip activates that, it'll be automatically uploaded here. Uh, the expiration date will be automatically added and you know that it's accurate. You don't have to check that and make sure that they entered it right. Um, and so all of that will just be automatically in there. You'll get notified that they added insurance. And so it just makes it really easy. Um, it also makes it so like, it, you know, as you have someone coming on board, they have a bunch of steps to do. And so it redu it just reduces barriers for them to have to, again, like find these things and do all these things and figure out insurance. And so it just, it helps you because they can do it faster and easier too. 
So that wraps up the last favorite feature. Any questions about flip? Um, Joe is asking what the flip rates are. Um, I don't know if you know any of them off the top uh, of your head again. That's a good question. Um, let me go. We have a specific, this is a different page. This is the kitchen door. If you're not listed on the kitchen door, put it in there. Uh, but if you go to the kitchen door and scroll down to resources, there is this page that can give you a little bit, and I can put this in the chat maybe. Um, I just entered it in there. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Give you a little more insight into the coverage details. And so, you know, it looks like $25.92 a month. And obviously it's going to depend on what, what kind of food business they are, what like additional things that they might need. Um, but that gives you at least a ballpark. And all of them are annual um, plans. But then once they apply, they can go in to, or, or once they're activated, um, they can go into the, the food corridor to their documents tab and um, access. It'll just say like, insured with flip. Um, and they can go in and access their flip account there. So if they need to make changes, add another additional insured cancel their insurance, whatever, they can just log in right here. So they don't, again, have to remember another site um, or things like that. So again, super easy to turn on. It's just right here, kitchen settings, documents, turn it on. We have another question, a general question. Um, how can I change the billing date? And is there any way we can get... Is there any way we can get an answer faster for ACH as by the time we get to know that the payment balanced it is around the 8th or the 9th of the month? Mm, yeah, good questions. Okay, so the um, billing date automat is defaulted to the 5th of the month. If you want to change that across the board moving forward, um, we can do that for you on our end. So just email us and let us know. Uh, it's just a 50, it's a $50 one-time fee, but then it's set moving forward. Um, if you want to change just like one client's billing date, like for one bill, say they communicate with you and like, I need an extra two weeks because I'm behind and you're like, oh, okay, that's fine. Um, if you click into their statement, there's this change billing date right there. And so you can choose a new date. Um, it has to be within this month, but you can do that too, just as like a one-off. But yeah, if you want to do it across the board for your kitchen, just let us know. Um, the earliest we'll do is the third, which is technically like this, the night of the second. It's the third at midnight. So it's the, yeah, the night of the second. Um, that way you as a kitchen can get notified on the first. Your clients can get notified of their bill and review it on the second. And then they'll be charged that night. So it just allows for eyes first before we charge it. So yeah, let us know. Um, your second question, ACH, is we love ACH because it's cheaper. Um, you know, it's, it's cheaper for you guys, and and that's great, but it is longer. It's just kind of an antiquated system with the banks. And so it takes, I think, three or four days of pending. Uh, and so that's just, there's nothing that we can necessarily do to change that. We already have it on accelerated payout timing which helps you get it a little bit faster. Um, basically what that, without going into too much detail, what that means is that you get the payment while it's actually still pending and then it's successful or failed. That can kind of be annoying for accounting because you're like, oh, I have the money, oh, it failed. But that's the only way to get it faster. And so we already offer that. Um, but yeah, it's just a little bit slower. We have another question. Um, someone who is on the starter plan says they do not have the option to change a vendor's default rate on the food corridor. Default rate. Um, do you mean like if someone's an hourly in the rate there? Yeah. 
If so, um, and you have them on hourly, you can click manage plan here and again, do that like custom hourly rate. Or if you don't have any plan set up, go into kitchen settings plans and you can create a new plan. And these you have time-based or credit-based and these charge your client monthly and you can set the rate. So if you want it to be something other than your calendar rates, you can use that percentage. Or if you just want it to be across the board and incentivize use by like, you know, your first 20 hours are this much and then your next 20 hours are this much and kind of incentivize tiers. You can also do a time-based plan and set all of those rates in there. So there's a few places to customize rates. I see. Um, they're saying that, yeah, they don't have the custom option. In the hourly? Under client. Yeah, so I guess it would be hourly. If they're assigned to a time-based plan already or a credit-based plan, you're not going to see that custom because you customize that in the plan itself. So if you set them to hourly, you should see this option. But for example, like these clients are not on hourly. And if I go in here, I don't see it. And so you can only do it if they're on hourly. Otherwise, you just set up all that customization in the plan. Cool. That's all right. That was, that helped. Um, uh, the next question we have, um, is there a way to charge rent, charge rental for equipment when a client is not renting the kitchen? For instance, the client is using the dehydrator and paying full space rental when prepping and cleaning up, but then only pays $2 per hour while the dehydrator runs for 12 hours. We have our clients on hourly billing plans with each client on a custom hourly rate to reflect our tiered rate structure. Um, but this overrides different rate space rental rates. Hmm. Ooh, that's a tricky combination. So I was going to say <clears throat> what some people do with some of those things that you don't necessarily need to be in the kitchen for, like a dehydrator, um, is just just to create a space calendar for that. So I would say like um, dehydrator two dollars an hour, for example, for twelve hours or whatever you want to charge. Um, I would almost do the setting that Haley showed us where you can create, say, de dehydrator, um, you know, $2 an hour. Maybe you have a minimum booking length. So if they're going to rent the dehydrator, it has to be like 12 hours, for example. Um, and to, to, if they're on time-based plans with tiers, um, what you can do is say, don't apply this to the billing plan, charge separately. And so that way it's not deducted from their billing plan amount as an hour. Um, the way that a time-based billing plan works is it just like, it's all hourly based. So it says like, you know, if you booked for 12 hours, that's 12 hours off of your billing plan, but maybe you don't want it to be equivalent to that. So you can say no, charge separately. And that way they book it $2 an hour for 12 hours. They're charged $24 that night after they book it. If I understood your question correctly, that would be my suggestion. Does that helps answer your question, Kent. Yes. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Equipment. Uh, we had some other staff favorites. So one of our other staff, Tyler, she said that her favorite feature was equipment. Uh, and so we just we had to to simmer it down. But um Equipment's a really nice way, A, to use for the reservation system. So, you know, so many food businesses, like the only reason they need to go into the kitchen is to use this piece of equipment. So that way they can reserve it. They know their time is worth it to go in and book because they're going to be able to use that. But you can also charge an hourly rate. So obviously you guys pay for maintenance and upkeep of equipment. Um, this is a nice way to even just something small to recoup some of that cost that you spend on equipment. Um, it also helps if you have something really small in there, even if it's a dollar an hour, uh, when a client books or when you book for a client and you add equipment, so say their booking is an hour and a half, if they only need this piece of equipment for say like 30 minutes and you have like a dollar an hour rate or $2 or something little, um, it's incentive enough for them to not just reserve it the whole time. So they can just reserve it for a part of the time 
Uh, and then that way it's free for someone else to reserve. So another little gem. Any other questions? That has, we've covered all the questions in the chat, but if anyone has any more, feel free to add them in here. Are there other favorite features that you guys have that you think someone else on this call should know about? Oh, we actually just had a question coming from Andrea. Oh, yeah. um, onboarding, and it's an onboarding template question. So does the TFC send reminders for missing docs when using a template? Um, yes. Yeah, those aren't necessarily connected. So if you have in there, um, upload all your acquired documents, basically the those, those are two kind of sets of notifications. So the notifications that get sent, if this is a task that you have in, uh, in their checklist, and they don't do it, they'll get reminded, they'll get reminded when it's next up in their list. And then they'll get reminded three more times if it's just sitting there and they aren't taking action on it, basically once a week, up to three times. Um, so they'll get reminded to do it. And then separately, then the expiration tracking notifications will also send. Um, so if they do upload them and then they're going to expire at some point, you know, we'll send them those those three notifications too in advance. The other cool thing on here, speaking of flip, uh, is this apply for flip insurance. And so you can just add this as a task and, and that way they can just know exactly what to do. Click on the link, be taken to that, choose choose flip and then, and then take off from there. So that's another thing we added when we added the integration because mostly clients are applying for insurance um, when they're onboarding into your kitchen. We have a question too. How do you charge utilities? I feel like you maybe covered this a little bit with the percentage, right? Yeah, it's right? A, yeah, it's a great question. I mean, there's several ways you could. Um, one, yeah, which was one that I covered, which you could in here say, if you're using credit-based billing plans, you could say charge 102% of the rate for anyone who's on this plan, maybe they're like high utility users. Um, so that's like a specific plan you have, high utility users and charge 102. So that's a nice way to work it in variably. Um, your other option would be the equipment. So charging a few dollars for, for equipment that uses utilities or higher utilities. Um, the other would just be in here, standard fees. You can add a utility charge and just say like however much you want to charge, you know, once a month, once every quarter, whatever, um, and and do it that way too. And then just assign it to a user and it'll be on their monthly bill automatically. So those would be three ways. So questions, did anyone have any favorite features in the chat that they want to just share with the group? Of like you have to use this thing. Mm -hmm. There's so much in your in our accounts. Uh, but hopefully today you guys learned some some new settings that maybe you didn't know about. Some hidden gems that can make your life easier or your clients' lives easier. Because uh, that's that's what we're going for. We do have another question from Max. Um, <laughs> Max is considering having three different time frame packages. So early hours, midnight to 7 a.m., peak hours, 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., and then later hours, 5 p.m. to midnight. What's the best way to do this? Um, people that buy the packages would only be able to book in those times. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. So there's a little bit of setup on the front end, but you can make it automatic. And so what you would do... Um, you can create those calendars. You can set the hours of operation for those calendars like Haley showed you. And then what I would do is one of this other little hidden gems in the client settings. So if you go into a client profile and these settings down here, 
edit, you can say bookable spaces is defaulted to on um, for everybody, but you can say, turn it off and then choose which spaces that food business is allowed to see and book in. So say you have one space, prep area one, and you want this cohort to book in your first time, second cohort to book in your second time, and third to book in your third time. Basically for everyone in your first cohort, say, so you create three, three calendars for that one space. Um, and then you can say like, this cohort can only see this space um, or can't see these other spaces. So you can use a combination of those things. So you can set these um, and or in kitchen settings calendars, set it so you just have, I guess it would be in either, in either or. You wouldn't have to do both. You could create another one that says like, this one's only open from six to six, or I can't remember the times that you said, five to seven, something. Um, I guess you could do both. Does that help? Okay, I would, I would take advantage of those two features. So hours of operation and then bookable spaces. And so the bookable space, basically what it happens. So if I go to Kylie's kombucha and I say, turn that off and choose, they can only see prep spaces. And then I save that and then go here to Kylie's kombucha. Oh, let's override this setting. The other thing you can do with the setting I showed you is override it. So if on a client level, you want to allow someone to book, even though they don't have all their required documents, you can say, just turn it off for this person. So let's just override that real fast. Refresh. Now, if I go to create a booking, I'm only gonna see those two options. Or if I try to book in something that's closed, so for example, Haley closed the pop-up calendar. I'm gonna try to book on a Friday. It won't let me choose that because it's closed. So that's your other, your other option. So yeah, a little setup on the front, but then it'll be like nice and automatic for you. Awesome. Max's thanks. We have one more question from Rick. Um, how does one see what the client sees as an onboarding? Um, he missed this earlier when we were going over it. No worries. Um, so in your kitchen settings, onboarding. So as you're setting up your checklist, you can click this button right here of you as prospect. Um, and you can click this for each of your checklists. So if you create multiple checklists, you know, onboarding for this, returning client for that or whatever, like onboarding for food trucks, onboarding for farmer's market vendors, um, for each of those checklists, you have this view as prospect button. And so you can see, and this just shows you an example. It's not, you can't interact with it. Um, it's just shows you like what it might look like for a food business. And so Every time you click this, the first step is going to show completed. The second step is going to show in progress, and these are going to show not submitted, just to give you an idea of what it would look like as an example. Um, but still, it's a nice way to see, like, do my instructions make sense? Do my links work? You can click on the links and make sure that they work. Um, yeah, so that's just, is, is the order right? Do I need to change the order? So yeah, and then you can just return to your account. But that view as prospect button. Perfect. Yeah. I always like to advise kitchens too to just create like a mock food business account, like a fake food business account and have them tie it to your kitchen. That way, if you're ever just curious what something looks like from their side, you can just log in in a different browser. You don't even have to log out of your account. Just open a different browser, a private window, log in as that food business. And then you can see just like, what might that look like for them? Cool. Any other questions? All 
Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for joining. We don't, again, we don't do this too much. So if, if you want more of these, let us know. If this was helpful, let us know. If it wasn't, let us know. Um, open to any and all feedback. So you can stick it in the chat or send us an email. Um, maybe you would like a lunch and learn on something really specific, like a specific topic. Um, anyway, we, we love feedback. So let us know what you thought. And uh, thanks so much for joining. Thank you guys. Yeah, Bye. thanks everyone.